Welcome to Heartland Vineyard's Message of the Week. We hope you enjoy this message. To learn more about the vineyard, visit us at hvchurch.org. Well, and so we've been asking you guys to send... Uh, send some stories of what God's been doing in your life, and so we've just got a couple we want to read it this morning. We want to go pretty quick today because as Michael uh, prayed here just a minute ago, uh, we're going to go out together and we're going to love on this city, and so we're excited about that. We'll tell you more um, here in a minute, but before we do that, we're just going to read. So, Carrie. Yeah. Okay. okay, here we go, guys. Um, this is our first story. I'm leaning into the Holy Spirit now when praying for people. Over the past few months, my relationship with my husband has grown stronger. I have found my true identity in Christ. I am a child of God made in his image, which makes more sense to me now. I am like Eve before the fall. I am ready for new challenges that he will lead me into. Not sure what those will be yet, but I am ready. All right. Number two here. The Holy Spirit has really been working in me these past months. I'm only 16, but he's constantly pushing me to spread his word. I joined HVC Youth this past year, and it has totally changed me. I've never been in such an intimate relationship with the Lord. I constantly feel the Holy Spirit tugging at my heart, and it's always so amazing, whether it's stepping outside of my comfort zone and praying or simply making decisions not based on my own opinions and ideas, but his. It has been incredible to see not only myself blossom, but many other Others that have been really digging into him. Recently, I've started a small group for high school girls in, in my town this summer, and we're finally building our FCA program that has been desperately needed in our school system for years. Hot dog for that. I've truly felt called to be a leader through the Holy Spirit, and the Lord has been blessing and leading me in every single way. If there's one thing that the Holy Spirit has led me to recently, it's John 3.30. He must become greater. I must become less. I was always so desperately trying to control and have, and, and have say over my life, but then I learned I didn't have that control nor needed that burden. He has it under control. All I needed to do was breathe and let go, and he took it all. Today I am less, and because of that I am more in him. I am more of truth. I am more of grace, and I am more of love. I am so grateful for what he has done in my life, and I cannot wait to see where the Holy Spirit leads me while sharing the gospel. I was recently baptized. I have now been clean for six months and have been able to let go of a very toxic relationship. So that's awesome. I'm also in the process of getting custody back of my children. Six months ago, I never ever would have thought this would have be possible. The thing that I have learned recently is that God can be trusted, and by his grace, all, all things are possible. As I look back at my life, I can't help but thank him. He has used the pain I have gone through. Because of that pain, I am becoming a new person. The Holy Spirit has used me to help others who are struggling with the same things I struggled with. He is good all the time. I am proof. We have been sitting on a huge bill this, this month connected to some damage done to our home by a hailstorm last year that was not going to be covered by insurance. We decided to do the work on our own dime. We have been saving our money to cover this damage for nearly a year. We were ready to pay the bill this week, but received a call from our insurance company out of, out of nowhere that they would be picking up the tab of nearly $8,000 that they had initially said no to. Last week when I brought my tithe, I thank God for his provision in our lives. This has happened over and over in our lives as we continue to trust him with our finances. I was ecstatic when I received this email, as you can imagine. As I thank God for his provision, I felt the Holy Spirit whisper, I got your back. He is so faithful. I've had a history of depression and trying to injure myself. But for the first time in my life, I know he has a plan for my future and for me today. I'm in Celebrate Recovery and even thinking about enrolling in the School of Kingdom Ministry in October. Woo! 
We have always wanted to move to Evansdale to be closer to my family, and since our current lease on our apartment was up on May 1st, we decided to start looking around for a home with more space that would be better fit for our family. We found the perfect home in Elk Run and called immediately. They showed it to us the very same day. We filled out the application and were completely transparent about my past criminal history and struggles. We were told that if our references checked out that the house was ours. We knew for a fact that those references were going to come back perfect. About two weeks went by and finally we received a call from the owner saying we were approved and the place was ours, but they were going to continue to show it until someone paid them the deposit to hold it. We accepted that it, accepted that it was not the time or place the Lord had for us as we did not have the, de- the money for the deposit. Then, two weeks later, out of nowhere, I received a phone call from the owners of the house. On the phone, the owner described how she and her entire family had an felt an overwhelming sense that we were supposed to live in her home. We knew that overwhelming sense was the Holy Spirit and our excitement was once again stirred up, but we still had the issue of no deposit. Here's where God stepped in. Shortly after the call, we received a completely unexpected gift. It was an It was an envelope of money, and not only an envelope of money, but nearly the exact amount of money we needed for a down payment for our house. I am so in awe of our papa. He is an awesome provider. We are moving into our new home on June 1st. A couple of Sundays ago, I was serving at church in VC Kids for the first service, like I do. Once all the kiddos have left, I had just a few minutes, and I just wanted to sit in the quiet, peaceful room before coming, out, before coming to the next service. Just then, a lady peeked around the corner and asked me if I was Destiny Miles. I recognized her face from coming to church here and working in other kids' classrooms, but I wasn't sure of her name. We introduced ourselves to each other. Then she proceeded to tell me that we have a mutual friend, so she asked that other friend what my name was, and she just felt like she needed to give me something. She gave me a devotional book called Bound Blessings. I thought maybe she was just the messenger and was just really passing something along from our mutual friend, but she said no, it was from her. She said I, have, she said, I had just been on her heart and felt like she should give this to me. I graciously accepted it and started flipping through it and thought, wow, what an amazing devotional. Then she told me there was a Mother's Day card in there too. I thought, I'll just open it and read it after she left. She left, and I felt quite overwhelmed by what had just happened, so I almost just put the book away in my purse. But something or someone told me to open the card, so I did. She had written a note in the card, and not only was that special in itself, there was more. There was $500 in cash in the card as well. I was so overwhelmed, and still am every time I think about this, that I just got pushed back into the chair behind me and just sat there and bawled. Not only is this a huge financial blessing, it's extremely significant because with everything that's going on with my house, my mortgage payment just increased as of the first of this year. And by how much? Yep, you guessed it, $500. I've been scraping together everything I have in order to catch up. Wow. God, I get it now. Oh, and... Amen. And last but not least, the last story here. In February 2018, I had a doctor's appointment that confirmed I had endometriosis. A hysterectomy surgery was scheduled to reduce my symptoms. The day after my surgery, the doctor called and told me I had multiple cancer cells in my uterus and that I would need to go to Iowa City two weeks later for, for a full hysterectomy surgery. My husband and I went to Heartland Vineyard the next weekend. After the service, we had a prayer team pray over us pray over us. They told us we should come to the healing room that they have on Sunday nights for prayer. After they prayed over my husband, after they prayed over us, my husband felt that the Holy Spirit had come over me and and that I was being healed at that moment. The night before surgery, we went to the healing room for prayer. My husband and I felt very comfortable with the prayer team and a peace came over me while we prayed and I felt no fear for the surgery the following day. The next morning, I woke up at home. I was lying in bed in the dark when suddenly I had a vision of Jesus and somebody else standing in front of me. I could see the other person 
who the other person was, but I could see Jesus' face. And when, and when he smiled at me, I had a feeling of such pure joy wash over me from my head to my feet. I just knew that everything was going to be okay. When the nurse was getting me ready for surgery, the doctor, uh, the doctor told me they would have a pathology team in the surgical room to test me, to test everything that was removed. That would determine how far the cancer had progressed. As I was leaving for surgery, my, my daughter and I said a prayer, thank Jesus for healing me. When I woke up, my husband told me that the doctor said they could not find any cancer in any of their tests, but they would double check everything over again because they were surprised that they could not find anything. Two weeks later at my checkup, I was told all tests showed no cancer and that I was cancer free. God is so good and he answers our prayers. Matthew 18, 19 says, again I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask, for it will be done for you and my Father in heaven. And a little encouragement from this person at the end. I encourage everyone to gather together with other believers to pray and receive from the Lord his love and grace. Good morning, Heartland Vineyard Church. Wow. It's so good to have you all here today. I feel like I ought to be speaking in tongues or something. I don't know. It's Pentecost, and wow, what a beautiful people you are. Aren't those stories awesome? Um, and I know there's so many more. I mean, we could tell stories all day. I just heard a lady today just talk to me about a female issue that she was having that was just completely healed, just in the last couple of days. So, I mean, there's so many other things that, that we could talk about, but I, here's what I want to do. I want to try to keep everything that I'm going to say today real short, and you're going to go, wow, that's different, and it is, because the great teaching will be as we go out and we do outreach, as we go out and love people. The people in the upper room, once the tongues of fire and the mighty wind came, they, they had to go out. They went out into the streets and they met thousands and thousands of people wondering what this all was. And they began to actually testify because of who they were as to this great Jesus who had given his life for them and then been raised from the dead. So I want to just encourage you this morning. I want to encourage you, first of all, to, uh, to just take some time and do a little outreach. It's very simple. This is real sort of high grace and low risk kind of stuff. It's not going to... It'll make you feel a little uncomfortable maybe, but it's, 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 you're going to watch. You watch what the Holy Spirit does with you as you uh, reach out to someone. I want to just use a verse of Scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible. And uh, in verse 8, it talks about, For by grace are we saved through faith, and that, that not of ourselves, it's a gift of God, not by works, lest anyone should boast. So we can't brag about our salvation. It's been given to us as a gift. And then in verse 10, it says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we're not saved by works. We're created, however, for good works. And once we are saved by his grace, now we're ready to go out and just love people in his name. And so I, I want to just share just a couple uh, little things with you uh, ab about outreach. Am I okay? I'm here in the back here. Hold that mic real close. Hold it up. Kiss the mic. Sorry. All right. My dear son. He'd tell me if my zipper was down too, so. <laughs> I know. Shouldn't have said that. Sorry. We can edit that one off. Okay. So I'm going to read to you a little story. And, um, this story, I know you're going to think, oh, this is one of Dan's jokes. But there's a point behind it. So if you could just kind of listen to the, the details of it, okay? So it says, a bagpiper. He says, I play many gigs. Recently, I was asked by a funeral director to play at a graveside service for a homeless man. He had no family. He had no friends. So the service was to be at a pauper cemetery 
in the Kentucky backcountry. As I was not familiar with the backwoods, I got lost. And being a typical man, I didn't stop for directions. <laughs> I finally arrived an hour late and saw the funeral guy had evidently gone and the hearse was nowhere in sight. There were only the digging crew left and they were eating lunch. I felt so bad and I apologized to the men for being late. I went to the side of the grave and I looked down and the vault lid was already in place. I didn't know what else to do, so I started to play. The workers put down their lunches and they began to gather around. I played with all of my heart. I played with all of my soul for this man who had no family and had no friends. I played like I've never played before. And as I played Amazing Grace, the workers began to weep, and they wept, and I wept, and we all wept together. And when I finished, I packed up my bagpipes, and I started for my car. And though my head was hung low, my heart was full. And I was op as I was opening the door to my car, I heard one of the workers say, I never seen nothing that like that before, and I've been putting in septic tanks for 20 years. <laughs> all right, now, <laughs> okay, all right, now hold it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it really is funny, isn't it? Okay, so, <laughs> okay, but now listen, and I know you're not laughing at my flat hat. You're, this, that was a funny joke. Okay, but listen, that guy, he, was, he got there at the wrong time. He got to the wrong place. He was with the wrong people, but what he did, he did with all of his heart. And I have to believe God honored that. And those people were touched by what he did. Folks, listen. This is what the Holy Spirit wants us to do. He wants us just to reach out and love people with our words and with our encouragement, with our, with our kindness and with our care. And that, that's what he wants of us. He wants us to move beyond our, our kind of uh, the, the awkward. And someone, I think, it, I can't remember who said it, the... the that the awesome is always hidden behind the awkward. That you, that you have to sort of press through the awkward, and you'll, you'll find the awesome behind it. And that's what's going to happen today, I promise, as you just reach out and you love somebody in Jesus' name. Let me read to you just this last thing I'm going to read. It's by Pope Francis, and uh, I know most of us here aren't Catholic, and uh, I've never been a Catholic, and I don't agree with all the doctrine, but I believe that this man is a a saved, spirit-filled man. He's a, he's a wonderful man of God. This is what he says. He says, I prefer a church which is bruised, hurting, and dirty because it has been out on the streets rather than a church which is unhealthy from being confined and clinging to its own security. More than the fear of going astray, my hope is that we will be moved by the fear of remaining shut up within structures which give us a false sense of security, within rules which make us harsh judges, and within habits which make us feel safe. While at our door, people are starving, and Jesus does not tire of saying to us, give them something to eat. Now, that segues me into this little bag, and it says on it, you're loved. And there are cookies that we have gotten that we put in little bags, and every one of them has a little tag. We have some gift cards that we're going to give you. Now, I, I have to help you understand something, and then we're going to worship for a moment, and Josh is going to give us some instruction. Folks, I, I have a good friend who is a farmer, and he plants seed in the ground. And uh, he plants seed with the expectation that ultimately that seed will grow up and bear incredible fruit. Now, he told me just today that a bushel of corn is costing about $4, just under $4 a bushel. But seed corn, when you buy seed corn, the corn that goes in the ground, it's costing $200 a bushel. Let me, let me tell you something. This is seed corn. You don't eat the seed corn. <laughs> 
you plant the seed corn, all right? <laughs> you may be hungry for these wonderful Hy-Vee cookies, but this ain't for you. Because this bag of cookies could possibly potentially represent hope and love and an understanding of God that maybe some have never experienced before ever in their lives. Maybe they're going through a really difficult time and as you just say, God loves you. That's seed. And it goes into the ground. And Paul said, I, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gives the increase. And so my friends, listen, I'm, I'm telling you, I want, if I have my druthers, I want every one of you to go out, take just a few minutes, ask Holy Spirit, who should I give this to? I guarantee you, he's gonna show you. And when you do, just tell him, hey, Jesus loves you. You just gotta know that Jesus loves you. And you watch, you've just planted a beautiful seed. You may ne never see the outcome, but I tell you, this is seed. So I wanna pray for us here, and then we're gonna worship. Father, thank you for this morning. Oh, Lord Jesus, even though we sang a lot of water songs today, all who are thirsty and like a flood and all, Lord, you didn't, you didn't rain on us today, and we're grateful for that. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for this beautiful, beautiful church family, and we pray not only for our church family, but the, the families of faith that meet throughout this city today. Bless each one, Lord. We love them. They're part of our family. So I, I pray... Just a wonderful outcome as we go out into our city. I pray that we could help by the power of your spirit tip this city right side up. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's, let's stand together. We'll worship.